morning and thanks so much for joining in. You're watching Ask the Prophet. My name is Alex Matthew. With me is Smriti Chaudhary and we'll take you through the next half an hour or so of trade. Like the name suggests, this show is aimed at getting you answers to all of your stock-related questions. And so, if you have them, send them to us on the WhatsApp number on your screen or in fact on any one of our social media platforms. Let's very quickly take you through how the markets are looking right now. And you have the benchmark Nifty 50. That's trading in a range. Uh, it's up about a tenth of a percent or so at this juncture. And it has traded in a very narrow range today. And the broader markets are more or less uh, reflecting that as well. At least the mid-cap index is uh, it's just about flat right now. You have the uh, small cap index that's trading with cuts of about half at this juncture. In terms of the key indices that are moving in trade today, it's the energy pack as a whole that's in focus, which is up about 1.6%. In fact, a lot of the power companies in focus uh, and they're gaining quite a bit in trade today. Uh, you have oil and gas, which is also about 1.4% higher, and you have pharma as a pack that is also doing reasonably well. Among the losers, you have the media index is down about 1.6% and is the worst performer sectorally. You have the IT index is also lower by about half a percent and metals are a little bit under pressure. But interestingly, you have uh, a couple of counters that are related to the metal index that are doing quite well or metal sector that are doing quite well. Those are the graphite manufacturers, HEG as well as graphite are uh, up and about in trade today. But we're focusing on a different set of stocks in trade today and that has to do uh, Smriti, with the wind uh, uh, companies, right? Right, yes. Uh, we are seeing some uh, downtick in wind stocks, and if you look at some specific names, you look at uh, uh, Sudlon that's down about 4.5%, uh, Orion Green down 3%, Sterling Wilson down about 1.5%, Inox is down 5%, uh, both, both the stocks, Inox, Wind and Wind Energy as well. But uh, we have Varsha joining in to tell us a little bit more about this and why the stocks are down today. So, hi, Smriti. So, if you see, as you rightly pointed out, uh, when energy stocks are under pressure, so Inox when is down 5%, Sangvi Movers is also down 7%, and KP Energy is down almost 5%. Now, according to some media reports, uh, Ministry had decided to bring back reverse bidding uh, as wind tariffs have risen in auction. Now, Ministry had sent letters to the agencies for the same. Now, this is on the back of under-subscription and higher tariff discovery in recent wind bids. So, if you see, there are, just to give an give give you in context, there are two uh, types of bidding. One is reverse and the other is closed bidding. Under reverse auction method, bidders continue to bid at, against each other after the initial bids are open and until a bid tariff uh, goes unchallenged by a, by a counter bid. Now, um, uh, incidentally, the ministry had given up this re reverse auction method at the beginning of this financial year. This method did bring down the tariff, but the problem was company had a lot of inventory that they sold off the inventory at very low prices which led to poor capacity installation which affected the uh, wind industry as a whole. So the reverse auction then was given up and closed bidding system was adopt adopted opposed to which tariff did rose. Now NDTV Profit did spoke with management of INOX went in Q2 FY24 where he said was that last time this was a problem as everyone had excess inventory and sector was not doing well but now situation is different. Government has target and companies don't have excess inventory. So according to him this shouldn't affect the industry as a whole but we are seeing pressure on this stock so let's see what happens. Right. Thank you, Varsha, for that. Uh, on that note, let me introduce you to the guests for today. We have Gaurang Shah of Jyotish Financial Services and Rajesh Palvia of Access Securities joining in. Welcome to both of you. Now, uh, Gaurang, uh, you heard Varsha talk about how energy companies may bring back reverse bidding. I've seen that the street is not taking positively to it. But how are you viewing this development to play out for these energy stocks? Thank you, Smriti, for having me on the show and uh, morning to all of you. So, I mean, power generation, power transmission, and power equipment, all these sectors are going to go through a major changes because of the new power capacities that are going to come up in the next five, three to five years. What I have been given to understand is somewhere close to about anywhere between 350 to 500 gigawatts is the new capacity lined up. This is the initial part. As we go forward, there will be more capacities that will be added. So definitely power generating companies are going to be benefited. Whosoever is present in the solar or wind energy. Uh, 
Uh, we do have positive coverage, Smriti, on some of the companies which are also into conventional and also into solar as well as wind. We are also positive on power transmission and distribution companies, power equipment companies, because all those, all these things will go together. It's not like one single sector is going to perform. So in the power generation, we are positive on Tata Power, NTPC, and CESC. Uh, we don't cover stocks like Suzlon or the rest of the, you know, uh, down the line uh, small cap or micro cap companies. Uh, we are positive on power transmission and distribution, and hence we have a positive coverage on power grid. In power equipments, we are positive on company like KC International, uh, LNT, uh, Siemens, uh, etc., because they are into making of power equipments which enable transmission process from manufacturing to the end user. So my sense is that being invested in fundamentally sound companies from a long-term point of view will make a lot of difference rather than going in for small and micro cap companies. All right. All right. Um, Goran, good morning to you and good morning to Rajesh as well. It's time to jump into the queries. We've got Amit Murkute, who's writing in from Mumbai, who's got the first question today. And he's asking about a couple of counters, different sectors, of course. Hindustan Zinc is one and Bata India is the other. He's asking if these two are good buys at the current levels for a period of two years. Uh, I'll come to you, Rajesh, on the, on the technicals of this one, of these two counters. Do they look interesting to you? See, Bata is in downtrend and uh, since last couple of months, we are seeing that, you know, continuous supply pressure is taking place in the stock. Stock is making uh, lower top, lower bottom formation on the daily chart. Stock now slipped below to all its uh, uh, near term, short term as well as long term moving averages. So, uh, trend is still on the weaker side. So, uh, stock is uh, attempting to you know, show some pullback action from uh, its uh, recent swing low. But still, it's failed to cross uh, above 1450, 1460. That's the immediate uh, supply zone for Bata uh, at this moment. Until the stock not crosses above 1460, 1470 level on a weekly closing basis, the uh, trend is likely to remain on the weaker side and we may see further more supply. So I think uh, Bata, uh, uh, I think we should uh, uh, avoid at this moment uh, uh, for trading perspective as the uh, structure is on the weaker side. Hindustan Zinc uh, uh, is uh, consolidating again in the consolidation uh, mode. Uh, if we analyze the longer term time frame, almost uh, it's consolidating in the same uh, price range of uh, 330 to uh, 300. Uh, that's the price range since last uh, uh, 8 to 10 months. And uh, still, stock not uh, manages to give breakout of a 330 kind of uh, zone on a closing basis. So once the stock crosses above 330, yes, uh, he may look to buy this stock. Then a uh, possible really we can see on the higher side towards 380, even 400 kind of zone uh, in Hindustan Zing. So at this moment, uh, if he wish to buy an equivalent, then he can uh, keep a stop loss of 290 uh, to buy an equivalent the stock. On the breakout above 330, he can add more positions. All right, understood. Next up, we have a question from Mansi, and uh, they're talking about two counters, Obroy Realty that they bought at 1518 and SJVN that they bought at 147. I think both the stocks are below, um, uh, were bought at elevated prices, Garanga. Now, we've seen uh, Realty sector, Obroy Realty is also up over a percent as we speak. Uh, based on these two, sec uh, two stocks, what's the long-term view for uh, both of them? See, firstly, let me speak about the registered sector, uh, because, uh, you know, this sector was down and out, bad boy of the market. A uh, lot of high beta movements in all the counters, whether it is Ubrai Reality, whether it is Prestige Estates, whether it is Shoba Limited, whether it is DLF or whether it is Goldrich Properties. But then a lot of changes came into this sector because of the government policy. And RERA brought in a lot of discipline which was missing. Uh, we... On Obrey Reality, we had a buy recommendation earlier, but in the recent run-up, the targets that we had set aside were achieved, and hence we have given out uh, book profits or sell recommendation on Obrey Reality. This is not only restricted to Obrey Reality, even on Godrej Properties, we have similarly, because our targets were met, we have given out a book profits or sell recommendation. Uh, low, though having said that, I think lower levels can be revisited in terms of long-term investment ideas, provided you have the numbers encouraging you to take a long-term call on the counters. And I'm quite sure today itself, I think 
one of the companies that came out with a record the sales is the signature global this is not a recommendation i'm just quoting a news item that i read this morning so there is a lot of appetite for new properties be it residential or commercial but in the immediate short to medium term the valuation looks a little bit stretched on sjbn unfortunately we don't have a coverage then let me very quickly ask rajesh for the view on sjbn is on the technicals rajesh what's the view so alex uh, stock is uh, after the correction uh, stock is uh, uh, consolidating and holding the ground uh, around its important support area of uh, 115 that's the important and critical support area of this corrective move if it breaks below 115 then we may see further more you know extended supply pressure and that possible we can see lower target towards 100 kind of level also so at this moment i think uh, he may hold the position with stop loss of uh, 115 uh, if stock manages to cross above 130 mark then yes possible uh, we can see a uh, rally towards a uh, 145 to 150 kind of zone in the stock in the uh, short term basis uh, but uh, looking at the near term short, short term structure we uh, we see that you know it may take time uh, as uh, uh, stock is showing you know a long consolidation kind of uh, behavior at this moment so i think it may take time if he can uh, uh, remain invested for some uh, longer period then yes keep his stop loss of 115 to hold position all right uh, let's get the next question in and this is on titagar rail i'm just pulling up the uh, share price as as we speak it's currently at about 940 or thereabouts and we've got a uh, viewer that is uh, uh, shri krish kishor sharma writing in from motihari bihar that is bought at levels of 225 now that's quite the buy price and uh, the question is goram uh, what what the prospects are for the next couple of years this is of course part of a pack that is gained quite significantly on the back of the government's push for expansion in the space absolutely so i'll comment on the sector uh, uh, alex for the benefit of the viewers and the investor my sense is that with the kind of changes that the rail ministry and government india is bringing into the indian railways to resolve the last mile connectivity issue is going to offer extremely well not only for those companies which are government companies associated with indian railways but also private sector companies which are associated with indian railways so it is going to be the case that you have huge opportunity in terms of orders coming in whether it is going to do with upgradation of wagons it is going to do with uh, laying new railway tracks or whether it is going to do with changes of uh, passenger coaches improving the speed of the train etc etc my sense tells me that for the next 3 to 5 years if you invested in railway related stocks then i think it's going to be a great opportunity next up we have a question on youtube this one's from uh, sid and uh, this is specifically for rajesh they were specifically mentioned to take this to to you this is on gppl uh, uh, gujarat pipa and they have uh, they've not mentioned the buy price but they want to know the mid mid to long term view on this so what are the charts showing on this specific counter and if there are any levels you should watch out for so we have seen uh, already there is a breakout uh, uh, happened in the stock and looking at the overall uh, structure for short to medium term perspective we believe that you know if the stocks continues to hold above 195 uh, 200 kind of level then there is a high possibility uh, we can see uh, again you know resumption of really in the stock once the stock crosses above 218 level then possible target in very short period of time we can see towards uh, uh, 250 to 260 uh, so that's the Uh, immediate target which we can see on the short term basis but uh, if we wish to hold it for longer longer term perspective so i think uh, uh, this stock has potential to you know again uh, reach to its uh, previous all time high trajectory also as the uh, overall structure is looking bullish and uh, on the monthly uh, chart stock also showing strength so we believe that you know one should hold the position with stop loss of 195 possible target we can see in short term towards 250 260 years Fair point. All right, we have to slip, slip into a very quick break. Uh, viewers as well as gentlemen, do stay with us. We'll be back uh, very quickly.
वेलकम बैक यू आर वॉचिंग आस्क प्रॉफिट ऑन एन टीवी प्रॉफिट लेट्स क्विकली जम्प इन द क्वेश्चन द फर्स्ट वन इज फ्रॉम श्रीमती श्रीधरन ऑन यूट्यूब द टॉक अबाउट बी एल एस ई सर्विसेज द बॉर्ड द स्टॉक एट थ्री हंड्रेड सिक्सटीन अ पीस एंड इट्स फुल ऑफ द चार्ज एंड सी वेयर द स्टॉक या इट्स अबाउट थ्री सिक्सटी नाइन एज वी स्पीक इट्स डाउन अबाउट टू एंड हाफ परसेंट राजेश ऑन दिस स्टॉक वॉट आर द की लेवल्स दैट यू शुड वॉच आउट फॉर so this is recently listed stock and we have very limited uh, data to analyze uh, on this stock but uh, whatever data we have uh, that clearly shows that you know on the downside the, the immediate support area is at around 350 level so that level needs to watch uh, on the near term perspective if it breaks below 350 then we may see further more profit booking uh, in the counter and then it may slide further uh, towards 320 level also on the higher side 400 is likely to act as a immediate supply zone on the higher side if it stops crosses those level then possible uh, again you know buying interest uh, we may see in the stock and then stock can really further higher uh, from the current level so 400 is the key resistance and the 350 is the immediate support area all right i got an interesting question for you uh, mohit from ludhiana is talking about state bank of india which he's bought at levels of 184 now uh, obviously given the buy price you can assume that he's bought quite a while back he's got 1000 shares COVID yeah covid lows so 1000 shares of sbi uh, the stock is currently trading at 771 he's looking for an outlook for the next 5 years what is the kind of upside that you would expect <laughs> i uh, this is really a difficult one like to answer very straight off so let me give this reply uh bro you got it at uh, 180 the stock is at about 780 you got 1000 shares uh, at least do this first of all we have a positive coverage let me give you a disclosure from a long term point of view and i think uh, the target that we had set aside alex we have discussed state bank of india many times was 740 or 750 or thereabouts today's share price the first target is already in place so you know do as the small things sell about 100 shares you will bring in whatever you have invested and a decent amount of profit the balance 900 shares will be of zero cost which will leave you with a lot of elevated risk appetite because you will not be putting in any money it's a zero cost valuation on fallback of earning visibility my sense is that the public sector banks uh the difference in terms of underperformance compared to the private banks is now a thing of the past i think our fourth quarter numbers are just round the corner alex we'll wait for the fourth quarter numbers to come through but as of now we have a positive coverage on state bank of india given the price that he's bought it he can book share profit in 100 shares bring in whatever he's put in and some profit and make the remainder costless all right got it next up we have a question from amit rastogi and the sons on inox wind energy while we've discussed the fundamentals of this as part of focus uh, rajesh uh, uh, um, amit bought the stock at 5500 mm-hmm. levels and they want to know the selling range for this particular stock spriti you talking about inox, inox, inox wind? wind energy yeah only sellers energy in the stock right now It's yeah, it's uh, down about five. Yeah, five. yeah, yeah. It will be delivered to me today or tomorrow. Sorry. So it's it's at lower circuit at yes, this moment. Yes. And now yes. Stock is the uh, stock is now trading almost near to its twenty uh, uh, day moving average, uh, which is uh, placed at around five uh, fifty uh, kind of zone. If it's uh, uh, continues to hit these kind of you know further more you know supply pressure, we can uh, see further more you know supply pressure to likely to continue. As Inox Wind is also uh, at lower circuit, Inox Wind Energy is also at a lower circuit. So I think uh, these stocks are uh, uh, under pressure uh, since last couple of trading session, and we can see further more a uh, down move. Uh, uh, so as he has bought at lower price, so I think he can uh, now uh, keep stop loss at around uh, 63.50. That's the immediate level. uh he can keep in eye uh, if that level breaks then he should uh, uh, book the uh, whatever profit uh, is left uh, uh, with the stock uh, so 6350 needs to be keep as a stop loss uh, if he is already holding this positions uh coming back to you rajesh on this next one tara steel we've got a question coming from rajesh maheshwari he's asking about this company is what 2800 at an average price of 105.5 he's looking for the short to medium term outlook what level should he look at 
so whole metal basket is showing good traction and tata is still uh, after very long period the uh, stock managed to give breakout of uh, this consolidation range if we analyze on the longer term time frame uh, uh, after you know almost a consolidation of two year uh, stock uh, managed to give this breakout so looking at this breakout uh, in the previous week and the stock is sustaining above 148 level that's the immediate level and important level for the stock at this moment if it's hold above 148 level for some more uh, couple of trading session then possible follow up really we can see towards uh, 162 165 uh, for trading perspective and if we can hold for further more longer period then possible target we can see towards 180 also in the stock so 148 needs to keep uh, as a stop loss uh, as he has bought uh, in the recent week that's the important and critical level for tata still now I right, got it. Next up, we have a question from Shrikant, and this one's on Vascon Engineering. They bought the shares at 87 a piece, and uh, they bought 555 uh, shares for this. They want to know if they should sell the stock. If you look at the stock, it's down about one and a half percent as we speak, at around 74, so below the buy price here. Uh, Rajesh, uh, what are the key levels that you should watch out for, and uh, would you suggest selling at this juncture? The stock now slipped below to its 20-day, 50-day moving average, and moving average crossover is also suggesting that you know we may see further more pressure in the stock. So I think he, he may try to exit the stock uh, uh, as on the higher side. 82 is the key supply zone at this moment until the stock not crosses those level. Uh, stock may remain under pressure only. Even uh, uh, in the recent uh, fall, the stock is now approaching to its uh, previous swing low also. That is at around. Uh, 72 kind of level. If it breaks below 72, then we may see further more extended supply pressure towards 65 kind of zone. So I think he may try to exit uh, the position as the trend is on the near term as well as on the short term is on the weaker side, and we may see further more uh, pressure in the stock in coming trading sessions. Got it. Uh, coming back to you, Rajesh, on uh, the option strategy that you would suggest for ITC. This is a question coming from uh, Abhishek. and he is looking for the target to pay attention to with regard to the march expiry see uh, if we analyze the overall structure for itc uh, stock is uh, in very you know tight uh, consolidation range uh, since last couple of uh, 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 week we are seeing that you know stock is moving in very you know uh, uh, limited uh, Price action. So, looking at the overall structure, we believe that you know till stock not crosses above 420, there won't be any you know uh, traction we will see uh, in the March series itself. But looking at the uh, near term, short term structure, if you wish to buy a call option, as stock has already shown some consolidation action, uh, some momentum is there in FMCG pack. So, we believe that you know at this moment he should look to buy uh, at the money call option that is at uh, trading at 410 call option that is trading at around nine rupees ninety paisa. That call option he can keep uh, because looking at the consolidation, uh, we believe that you know 400 needs to keep as a stop loss for this option. He should place the stop loss at around four rupees. Any fat all stock crosses above 420, then possible target for this option is he may get around 18 rupees to 20 rupees. So keep a stop loss of four rupees to buy 410 call option for ITC uh, for this March series. Uh, already consolidation has has been done, so there is a high possibility that you know stock may attempt to give some pullback uh, from uh, uh, current level. All right, got it. Now, unfortunately, we are completely out of time. Uh, thank you so much, Gorang and Rajesh, for joining and for yeah. answering questions for us. And viewers, uh, if you were not able to take your questions uh, today, we'll definitely try and take them tomorrow. But uh, stay tuned. Lots more coming up on NDTV Profit.